Greetings students, I'm back again to review seismic waves. I'm sure you have already read about these or have done the exercises that relate to seismic waves, so this is going to be a great review. Remember that there are body waves and surface waves. As an aside, you will notice that the animation on the right is a satellite image showing the change in the landscape after the July 4th earthquake last year near the town of Ridgecrest, California. Notice how the top half of the image moves to the right relative to the bottom part of the image. Is this fault a left lateral or right lateral strike slip fault? Based on the offset of the roads to the right, it is indeed a right lateral strike slip fault that the July 4th earthquake occurred on. Isn't it so cool that you know that now? Let's get back to waves though. Here is the motion of a P wave. It is the faster of the two body waves and it arrives at a seismometer first. The P wave has a velocity of five to eight kilometers per second in the crust of the earth. By the way, your book may have used the word seismograph instead of seismometer, but the latter is used more often by seismologists today. Okay, back to P waves. Notice how they have a push-pull motion? These types of waves can move through solid, liquid, and gases. Sound, like the voice you're hearing, is also a push-pull wave. And yes, you can hear people talk underwater. Have you tried it before? Dolphins use this all the time. S waves are also called secondary waves. They are slower than P waves, and they are also called sine waves. Their typical velocity in the crust is around three to five kilometers per second. Notice their up and down motion. This type of wave does not travel through anything liquid. By studying body waves, scientists were finally able to understand the layering of the Earth. No one has gone down to the center of the Earth to see what's there. It's way too hot and there's way too much pressure. In 1836, Inge Lehmann, a Danish seismologist pictured on the left, discovered that the Earth has a solid inner core inside a molten outer core. And that's not a typo. She lived that long. Dr. Lehman's discovery was based on her research on the behavior of seismic waves after an earthquake. When waves move through material, they will change directions, meaning they reflect and refract, and they also change velocity when they hit a material that is a different density. Remember that body waves travel through the entire planet, but when the P wave ray paths hit the outer core, they are deflected in such a way that on the other side of the Earth, there is no history of P waves being recorded. That area became known as the P wave shadow zone. Benno Gutenberg was a seismologist who worked with Charles Richter of Richter scale fame, but we'll talk about him later. They both worked together at Caltech. He found that there was an S wave shadow zone as shown in the picture. The S wave shadow zone is so large because the S waves that emanate from the focus and travel to the earth are completely absorbed by the outer core, which therefore should be liquid because S waves do not travel through liquid. The core mantle boundary became known as the Gutenberg discontinuity. But we aren't done yet. Remember that there are surface waves that form when the body waves reflect and refract off of the surface of the Earth. This is an example of a love wave named after Augustus Love. The love wave is the third fastest of the waves. Notice that it is a shear motion, but it is a side-to-side snake-like wave. It's the side-to-side -side motion you feel when there is an earthquake close to you. Then there are the Rayleigh waves, and they provide the rolling motion during an earthquake. The velocity of a Rayleigh wave ranges from one to five kilometers per second. This is the slowest wave. In this slide, you see the combined motion of the Love and Rayleigh waves during an earthquake. But remember that we also experience the P and the S waves during an earthquake. And guess what? The closer you are to an earthquake, the closer together in time all of those waves arrive at your location. That is one of the reasons why there is so much destruction near the epicenter of an earthquake. 
And here's something cool. You can measure the distance you are from an earthquake by looking at the difference in the arrival times of the P and the S wave. And that will be the topic of our next video. But for now, keep shaking and I'll see you soon.